So I'm gonna model this clock, this mantle clock, in an arts and crafts style. And it's just an opportunity to kind of explore um, a design. What you'll see is I'm not gonna resolve all of the joinery um, or even the internals of this, but really this was an idea where I could say, hey, um, how's this gonna look? Is this worth building? Is it worth developing further? I like the way it came out. Um, you can see from the transparency, sort of the extent to which we, we're gonna take it. And it's, the, overall this, is, uh, this video is kind of just a new experiment, new direction that I can try. And let me know if it's useful. Let me know in the comments if there's uh, furniture or type of projects that would be worth modeling. So I've sped this up by half so that if you want to slow it down by half on the playback then you can view it at real time or you can speed it up uh, again if you want to view it even faster. But the idea being if you're you know, a little bit familiar with SketchUp but want some more tips and tricks hopefully you'll pick some up. Um, or just want an idea of how you might approach a project like this. And I'll talk through some of the ideas and the design. So far, we created just a rectangle, pulled it up into a group, and then used the scale tool to sort of stretch this in combination with the tape measure to create some guidelines that I'm moving these out at one inch uh, increments and saying, you know, does this look okay? At this point, I, the base was a little too tilted. Uh, I wanted it, you know, just examining it. So I, yeah, for for my purposes, let's bring that in. So I'm using the tape measure to measure in by one inch, and that was a little more than I wanted, so I tried half an inch. And I'm using the tape measure so that the scale tool has something to snap to. Or I could just scale sort of free form, but I wanted to keep the measurements somewhat accurate. Now that I made this about 18 inches tall, six inches deep, and the base is around 14 inches wide, if I remember correctly. And then the clock face here, I believe is a six inch by six inch square. And again, you can, you can get a clock face in different sizes. So maybe you would base your size off of the mechanics that you have, or you can get the, the clock movement and build a custom one at any size but once I have that's just the sort of proportion overall proportion I'm gonna actually start building out pieces again I don't know exactly what this is gonna be like so I'll create one leg rotate it into place and start to tweak this then Trying to use inference locking here um, to line this up, but because of the axis and because I had tilted my component, uh, my axis was a little different. So I just jumped out, created a reference <clears throat> according to the regular uh, axis, and then came back in and made, started to do some editing. And then I can mirror this, move it over in place and rotate it. and take these two and copy them back and mirror again. I always use the scale tool to mirror, but a lot of people will use the, the right click option and flip along axis. For me, the scale tool gives me a visual reference of how to mirror, so I like it. Some other people use a plugin by TIG. There's an actual mirror plugin that's uh, pretty powerful. I just, I've never needed to, to use it, so um, the, the scaling via the I'm sorry, mirroring via the scaling tool has always worked very well for me, so I've never found any need to change that out. At this point, I started, you know, getting the idea of maybe I will work out some joinery, but this is as far as I went, as far as the joinery goes. Um, I didn't add much more in this build.
Sometimes I will mirror that as a component for the joinery. In this case, I just copied the geometry over and I could delete out the center and, and easily snap that back in place. Make this component and copy it back and so we're sort of just getting the framework here. So I moved this back. I moved it over by 20 inches so I'd have an easy something to remember and I can easily move it back by 20 inches. The legs on this, they're tilted in. As I was looking at it, I thought I kind of want those to be a little bit wider at the, at the base, at the bottom. Um, if I made them very wide, I, I, I like that okay, but I still, I kind of like this, the way that it looked right now, where sort of uh, the legs were sort of a pair of legs um, coming in. This probably would make it a little bit more difficult to build because you'd be working with this sort of arbitrary angle um, that the leg is set at but I like the way it looked, so I went with it. And then I was creating a little reference to move that my clock reference over. I didn't end up using you know, that first sort of really basic proportional clock much anymore, so didn't need to do that reference point. And at this point, I created a one inch cross member and then I could copy this down reference the original and then decided okay let's put some sides in here now there's not there's, I wish I had sure um, I, I, I wish I could claim that I had a, a really good methodology and purpose for every step I'm taking but I'm sort of just making it up as I go so in this case, like, okay, let's figure out the, some of the sides. Um, I've been working on the front of it for a little bit, so let's work on the sides. No real logical or mm, you know, reason to do so. It's just, okay, let's do that. I'm making most of these pieces one inch or the sides here are half an inch and here I'm lining these two there it's a component but I'm just making sure that on each side that they're set up correctly so whatever I'm doing to one will mirror to the other Well, it, it would mirror to the other anyway, but anyway, so they're in the correct position on both sides. So I'm just tweaking this, figuring out how does that look. Now I wondered at this point, so I've got the sides going parallel with those canted legs. I wondered, well, what if I made those sides go down vertically, which would emphasize, at least from you know, certain views, how the, the legs are wider are splayed at the bottom. And I, I did like this option, but not as much. And so for this one, I decided to keep going here with, with the sides that are just going to be parallel with the outside of the leg. Now, so we're playing with where those sit inside. I think I put those about half an inch in. And then came back and said, okay, inside this component, I'm going to create this group. And here's where I was still sort of playing with, maybe I'll make, you know, what, how, how would I join this? How would, how would this all attach? I was still kind of playing between the ideas of design and um, functionality and joinery. So would this be a big piece that uh, that side, you know, 
that helps to join all of that together, maybe, but in the end, pretty quickly here to say, oh, well, um, it would be simpler even in the joiner side um, if this were just on the, uh, the face. This, this doesn't have to be a big structural member of this clock. It wouldn't be necessary, so... So then, because of the way it's angled, I was using the tape measure tool to give me some guides for where to place it vertically. And, yeah, after tweaking the sides a little bit, getting those a little farther on, obviously I'm back to the front now. And I thought that that curve, um, I didn't quite like the way that it sat inside all of the members. So I came back and said, even though this would be made from different pieces, what if we created that curve after the fact? through all of these pieces, so I've created the curve wider. Then I could copy that little bit that was on the outside, copy it to that leg component. And I like that much better. And with that done, then I can come back and say, okay, how far down do we want to bring this sidewall? And let's bring down this member two. <clears throat> On this side, again, I had made the side overall a component, but inside there, I'd made each of those blocks groups so I can tweak them without needing to make them unique. So let's fill this out, um, make this clock face. <laughs> I kept snapping to the back midpoint. Um, but I just needed a center reference. Again, not, not entirely working out what the clock face is going to be. And this is kind of a funny point. For me personally, this is, this is an area where I can get in here and just spend so much time working on details that aren't gonna matter, aren't ever gonna be, come to life or be seen, but it's so easy to just jump in and start fiddling around with the details. So I kept telling myself in my in my mind, just like, just make it simple, just make it simple. I just need a basic clock face uh, to get. So I'm like, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Go, ready, go. Nope, I couldn't. It's not an art. Let's make it a little more detailed. Let's just tweak, tweak, little, little more, little more. <laughs> oh, but if you're not having fun, then uh, that was the point. I think what is funny here is I didn't even realize at this point how tall I had made this minute hand and I don't even realize that until the very end and I never fix it. The thing is too tall to even rotate within this uh, clock face, within the space I've given it. But that's okay. So I've got my basic hand, I'm, I'm hovering around the edges of the circles to find the centers and line those up. I had copied from the one uh, circle to the other to make those the same size and then I'm just creating another hand. I had only made this a group, not a component. So each of these hands I could easily tweak and uh, 
come in here and make this the hour hand. Similar thing, I'm looking at this and being like, wait a second, it was this? Well, just stop, don't worry about it, just create something. <laughs> just create something. You can, I didn't notice, you can tell from here that that, that uh, minute hand will not rotate fully. I don't know, maybe if I extend it past the clock face, it doesn't matter. What is that? 437-ish? It's a good time for... I, I don't know. That's, that's It's closing time. It's time we're all getting ready to go home from work, so that's a good time. So coming back to the top, again, I had my reference and I knew, okay, we'll do something where it uh, um, creates some sort of trim at the top, some interesting trim. So I created a face that I can use follow me on and then just a basic profile and copied that and pasted it into place into the rectangle and this was just a test to be like, okay, will that work? And I liked it fine. So didn't tweak it any, any further. So just sort of getting a basic idea of how this would be built in pieces and we cut on the angle and then I immediately said actually this should be a little bit a little bit thicker at the top and it probably wouldn't if it's on a mantle you're not going to see the top so the way I would probably create this is with maybe a half inch uh, depth plywood that's at the top or hard hardwood but either way that that whole entire piece may not be one solid piece so at least that's how it was in my mind Again, this is sort of just like looking at it, saying, "What's the? Uh, this this looks pretty good. I'm I like the proportions. I like uh, the basic design. What little things need to be tweaked, and um, it would have been very easy at this point to to say, you know, if I liked it well enough, then I could start to develop it." And actually start building out joinery and such. I, I kept tweaking and playing around with the details. Here you can see I'm actually making the separate mitered pieces of trim. Creating a, a plane that I can intersect. I am using SketchUp Pro for this so I could easily have used something like the Boolean tools to create that but intersect with model is often uh, just is, is easier, better for definitely for something simple like this. And intersect is in the free version. There's nothing that we've done here that's uh, not in the free version. So tweaking these pieces and making them, like say, the minor pieces. I, because I didn't finish this out fully with the joinery, this wasn't necessary, but... So 
So I've got duplicate geometry here, so let me hide the groups I just made, delete the underlying geometry, and then <clears throat> get this now. At this point, I'm looking at the back and saying, well, I do need something on the bottom, something on the back. And to do that, I thought, okay, th this will be easier if I make these back legs actually uh, vertical on the inside. Now, again, I, I ran into this issue where the the axis of that component is a little skewed from the world axis, so it wasn't lining up quite how I needed, so I just had to make a little reference. But now these are vertical, which if in construction would make at least making the back of this a little simpler. I'm not having to worry about cutting sort of the interior of this on some angle and I can just cut it straight. So each of these back legs sort of guessing should it be half an inch three-quarter not uh, three-eighths something now here I realized from the front I, I shouldn't make this down too low and also I, I probably want to come back in here and tweak the joinery up there at the top but that's for another time So just finish out. I, I made this like a like a one quarter inch uh, slat that goes inside there. I was just grouped so I could easily copy this and make this different. And we'll make this the bottom. I didn't resolve this as far as joinery goes either, but it, placement. I did keep it uh, and said okay. Placement is right, you know, put it up here, move it up, turn on hidden geometry so I can see through and then move it back down by half an inch. And I can lock and move these out where they need to go. Uh, as before, if I were going to build this, I'd need to come back in and resolve some of that joinery, but that'd be fairly simple to do. So it was looking pretty done. Um, I went off. Uh, yeah, I pulled these down. I, I thought the, the offset would be a little more interesting. But at this point, I thought, okay, let's... Let's throw a texture on here and just get an idea. If I were to make this out of, let's say, quarter sawn oak, then, so I found an image of some quarter sawn oak. I'm just gonna bring this image up and scale it so it's something close, and then explode it. Now I had forgotten that by exploding it, by default, it's projected so that side you can see you get sort of those streaks because it's projecting straight so I needed to come back and go to the texture right click and turn off projected and then it'll wrap around the sides like I'd want it to <clears throat> and once I've got one texture apl uh, applied in there I can just sample and start painting so all of the vertical elements I can sample I do want to change the position on the horizontal elements so that it matches better with that. So go into the texture tweaker and do that. But I can select this geometry, sample that front, and paint that. And then just sample and, and paint from there 
to the other elements. I'm not worried about how exactly this matches up. Again, just trying to get an overall idea. So I'm going to need to come over and use Texture Tweaker a little more to make it work on these sides. So if I sample that texture and paint it, that one actually works because those those panels probably would be vertical, would have a vertical texture, but the these other panels would have a horizontal texture. So I'm going to come in and tweak that. And at this point, I'm doing a little bit again because of how we painted it to that original leg, which is slightly off axis, which is a little canted. The textures were a little bit. Uh, as well and so it was um, so I'm just tweaking a little bit making it a little more vertical it doesn't matter that much but once I've got one of those done then I can get the rest of this sample and paint to these sides the angled pieces sometimes you'll need to come in and and retweak a little bit but the rest of these are pretty straightforward to sample and paint. I had sampled the side of that leg up there and so it acted a little weird to sample the front. Sometimes you sample different, different sides of a piece of geometry to get what you need. Now at this point, I sh easily could walk away and be like, okay, no, uh, this looks good. If I want to actually build this, I'll go in and tweak and make the joinery and, but the, the basics of it are all there. Right? But here's where you have a little bit of fun and say, okay, um, let's add a little more detail. Let's see what happens. I'm not, I, I haven't figured out you know what goes on in that lower panel below the clock face is that some decorative element uh, so there's a couple things we could do first so let's create some contrasting plugs and even if these are not actually used in the joinery let's just say they're faux plugs still want to say okay what do those look like and I'm not worried about finding an actual texture for these just having a maybe these are walnut or some just darker wood so I made the plug itself a component and bringing it down uh, not not being too concerned about exactly where they land as long as they look right. So I'm going to cut those and then paste them in place inside the component so that they copy over. Still undecided. Maybe uh, that lower piece create some really interesting inlay or um, maybe uh, an image or picture of something I ended up just putting in some these little cross pieces uh, in a pattern but But again, this is just this is exploration of what this what this might be. So I think each of, each of those pieces were set in by uh, by an inch.
I like the way the contrast was looking, so decided to explore that a little more and say, okay, what happens if we um, make this, uh, add some contrast and different elements and change the way this looks. So let's add, again, maybe it's a, maybe it's a walnut uh, something on the sides and on that, that front, and then come in and add little details on the clock and if those were made in the original oak or a beech or a maple, some light wood, then they, those would stand out. And shall I make 12 of them? Shall I make four of them? <laughs> Let's do. That was looking interesting. Thought I'd take uh, the main four, make them unique, and then make them stand out a little bit more. But that's it. So again, if you have questions or or suggestions on other uh, pieces to model, please let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.